All right, guys, welcome back to another Series of Idle Adventure video. So, Merlin is dropping tonight. There's still a few more hours at the time of recording before the banner does drop or the update goes in towards maintenance. And should you be summoning? But also, but also should you now be considering the summon for Derry? Because now that we know Merlin is not the craziest broken support where everyone needs to summon for her, I do think this Merlin is actually a skippable character, at least in terms of the character we've gotten recently, to where, like, let, look, let's look at the last, like, support character that came out. Gopher was the last support character, and out of the three support sins, being King, Gopher, and obviously Merlin, I do think Merlin is the worst. Not to say that she isn't good, because all of the supporters, Gopher, Merlin, and King, they all do different things, and if you combine all three together, you got a pretty good combo. But if we look at them individually, King giving you final attack and crit damage, that is very good. Gopher giving you accuracy, which is okay, but sometimes not that useful. But the main thing is the energy restore, which is very useful in a lot of boss fights when you're trying to rush through ultimate. You're also getting that ultimate decrease cooldown. Very, very useful. Where we look towards Merlin, she is going to be giving you 20% crit chance. And that is basically it. Sure, you can buff remove, which, you know, can be good in PvP, especially because it does it like the back lines, so you can hit supports, you can remove a bunch of buffs. Uh, also, it can be good in PvE content, mainly because I know recently, at least in my team building that I've been doing, like, this is a team I've been running for, like, most of my story quests. And sometimes, especially recently, when the boss has, like, that barrier to where the you know, absorb damage equal to the HP. I'm constantly swapping out my actual Gloxia with a buff removal, whether that be obviously Bellion or obviously Let's. So I will say, now with Merlin coming out to the game, I can now prop her in on my team, have that constant buff removal every 10 seconds, not constant, but you know, you can time it. Have the 20% crit chance for not only Merlin herself, but King, Derriere, because she does buff up red characters too. Osa as well, my Escanor and also Barn. And Melly, if I want to use him, go for two. Like, it's going to be a pretty good character. But the thing is, though, do you actually need a summon? So let's talk about a few things. So firstly, will she do anything special? We have to wait and see. Because I think if you look at the last two characters, that being Escanor and also especially Derriere, a lot of people are surprised even for Escanor. We, they kind of slept on his ability because they didn't know how that skill to work. Where you could proc the sunshine like 30 times, like one hit basically. So people thought this is going to be a bad skill, but it turns out it was actually pretty good. It has really good AoE, really good damage as well. Derriere sounded really good on paper, but we didn't know how tanky she was going to be. We didn't know her attack speed. And it turns out she had really good insane stats. Like if you look at her stats comparable to any other DPS in the game. Like watch that, 7 million HP. Where we look towards Eskino, who are both the same rank basically, 7 star. Derriere almost has triple the amount of HP as Escanor, which is just insane, right? So, like, we won't know if Mana does anything special until we see her in-game. Not that I think it would change anything, but it could make the character look better. And the ways you could do that is maybe giving her a really fast attack speed. Maybe they will actually make this a uh, knockback a lot bigger than we actually think. So, if you lot don't know, the ultimate does say it's going to do damage from 1.5 meter, like, wide, but 7 meters back, which, to be fair, is pretty good, right? Because Exterminate Ray is going to hit the back line. And people that are hit by that beam are going to get knocked back and also have their buff removed, which is going to be good in PvP, like I did say. But the knockback is curious a little bit because how big is the knockback? There's a few characters in the game that can knock back. Uh, one is the Haka, this guy here, if I said his name right. But he knocks back by one meter. Not far at all, right? But also as well, we've seen knockback can be pretty good in PvE boss fights, whether you're versing the giant Deant in like the early stages where she knocks your opponents back, or if you're versing the Silver Demon, the Silver Demon can knock back pretty far, and that can be kind of annoying. I will say it's a little bit fortunate that she doesn't bind, and it actually might give bind a use in the game, which to be fair, none of the sins do it, and there's no real crazy character that you want to bring to bind people, but like, you know, knocking them back and binding them is a strategy we could see in the game if we get more support for it. But like I just say, we don't know how big the knockback is, is it's possible that like the beam is a crazy beam where she just sends it and everyone hit by the beam gets sent straight to the back of the ultimate by seven meters once again maybe that would change how it would work in pvp because that won't be too great in um you know pve content because if you think about it, if you're playing pve like if i was like helping right now if merlin ults and sends help him back my units have to run towards him that could waste some time. So, like, don't forget that there's stuff that is going towards Merlin that isn't telling me she's a must summon. Now, let's talk about the main use. And to be fair, that the main thing and why you're summoning is the Reflect Curtain, which is going to be the level 5 Sever, the 20% crit chance, and also the damage over time immunity towards Acid and Burn. Now, this makes sense. If you look at the sins of what they buff up, they already have basically every buff in the game. We have crit damage of King, the attack buff from Gopher, the accuracy buff, you know, Gopher. We have the energy restoration. The only thing we could have gotten 
is the actual Sevi. And if they really want to, they could have gave her perfect cube and made her a better girl for us, but we'll digress. But you now have the full buff, basically, and that's her main use. Now, let's talk about is crit chance actually good, because I know there's some confusion about it. So let's go towards Escanor, for example. So Escanor right now has, at least for me, has 29, you know, crit chance base, but it also 83 extra crit chance through my account stats, because I've been leveling up my actual, you know, secret lab or, you know, my lab sample. I've gotten good rolls a little bit, even though we have no crit chance on the character. So we has got over 100 actual crit chance. So you might think 100% crit chance means you're going to crit 100% of the time. But that's not true because you've got to also factor in the boss's critical resistance. I think you minus the critical resistance with your crit chance to give your actual crit chance. And also Eskinor does increase his own crit chance by... Was it 12%? I think it is. So we're going to get started game right now. And he's going towards Hellbrim. And we look at his stats here. Uh, Hellbrim has got... He's got 79 critical resistance, which you too fair, you can lower, of course, right? But that's 80%. So in turn, my Escanor at base only has like extra like 30% crit chance. Where now with Escanor, if I had Merlin and Escanor together, that's uh, 50%. And then Escanor increased by like 12%, that goes up to like 60%. It does make a big difference, crit chance. And I will say when it comes towards like Tower Trials or Avin boss battles, or definitely in the Nightwood boss battles, relying on a crate can give you a lot of points i know i've had a bunch of runs especially in like the Avon boss battle even in the silver demon where i'm only able to defeat it if my barn my escanor gets a really big crit in ultimate so yeah now merlin is making that a bit more consistent now let's talk about the big elephant in the room and that is well she doesn't need to be duped out if you go towards other characters like king like gopher they have one big drawback and that is they have to successfully attack or successfully land attack to get this cooldown to work to get this ability to work even this accuracy buff and also the restore energy you have to successfully land attack so that does mean the lower the dupe level on the character the lower the accuracy and the more likely you are to miss on a, on a hit which means the character while you're using the character just doesn't work and that same goes for king as well where my king are free star and i'm starting to notice a little bit where he's starting to miss more and more times especially when you progress through high stages and you get towards the harder content to where yeah accuracy does matter where the thing with merlin in fact having a low dupe generally may not actually matter because you don't care about hurting damage on a single target skill the reflection curtain is just a buff you have passively just for having her on your team literally she, she doesn't have to proc anything right and an exterminate ray unironically if the knockback is really annoying having her at low dupe level missing might actually be a benefit but generally speaking that's probably not going to be a good thing you probably want her to deal extra damage and the multiplier to be fair is quite high so i do think marlin will be a bit more useful at a low deep level once again depending on her actual range i'm gonna assume she has got 65 range on her abilities uh maybe more than king right because she's a long range fighter like she has like the longest range in service origin her range is insane i know it's uh two different games but you get my point merlin if anything is known for having range attacks if she doesn't have 65 range they've done something wrong and if she doesn't have long range then that does mean unfortunately yeah you may have to deep her out because she's gonna be close towards the fight but she's more likely to die and i would say that's just like pve content uh, i do think when it comes towards pvp though she might need to be duped out mainly because well we have a lot of characters that can reach the backline now with monspy you know deberry Escanor, even Mer now merlin for example there's gonna be a lot of characters king so you do need to be a bit more tanky and especially deberry now with the fact that she's a sport character deberry is gonna run straight towards the character and um if she's very squishy and very weak then she may actually just instantly die right so yeah should you be summoning for merlin i do think the character is worth it but she's also not the most enticing character i do think if you want to skip her you definitely can and you can substitute you can you don't even need to bring crit chance because it's not like that crazy right you know what's more important is getting gold for to get the energy and obviously king to get that extra uh, extra attack and crit damage if you do manage to crit which you can still do because characters like escano can crit anyway but i can't lie and say she's not going to work really well with obviously the sin team mixed with derriere because derriere people can forget but like her little combo star, you get, like, 30% of the extra attack. Like, there's, unfortunately, there's, like, no way. I mean, you could probably put Melascula in to get the crit damage. And you have the crit chance. And you have, like, literally a full-on, like, maxed out day rate as, like, what she wants. Where she got really good attack, crit chance, accuracy buff from gold because they work universally. And then uh, the crit damage from Melascula a little bit. Like, that actually could be a really good combo now. So, yeah, if you want to skip Merlin, you definitely can. In terms of what's coming next, I will show this on screen now. This is the lead artwork for the new Seven Days Sins, Deanne, coming towards the game. Who, if you don't know, if you're not aware by now, there will be another Deanne. Because we still need to get the Seven Days Sins, Deanne, who has already been shown in the artwork in the trailers where she has got a Season 2 skin. We don't know what the character does. At least I haven't seen leaks of her. 
other than the artwork. And it's very possible Deanne could be a tank character, because why not? We haven't gotten... I mean, Deanne's just a giant. She's going to be a tank, right? Uh, but she also could be a debuffer, because we have yet to get a Sin debuffer. So that could be a really good thing, too. In fact, if she comes out with Bind, where you can, like, combo both Merlin with Deanne, that could be really good, too. And remember, we just got, obviously, Derriere, and Merlin kind of compliments Derriere a little bit. So I won't be surprised if the next character is a Deanne who compliments Merlin even more as well. But it's also possible, if you really care for those characters, and I assume they're going to be a lot better than Merlin, it's going to be Esterosa and Osa Zeldris. Those are two characters that you can imagine are going to be pretty, pretty good, whether that be because they're crazy DPSs, where because... Maybe Esterosa has a full counter where he literally taunts and the damage taken for like five seconds, he reflect back. Like that could be a really cool mechanic. Zeldris might even buff up Derry more than what Merlin is doing by making Commandments a lot better or being a really good debuffer. Like we can definitely say for certainty that Esteros and Zeldris may be better. But then again, that might be in two weeks or maybe it's in four weeks, five, six weeks even. Who knows, right? So, you know, you still have time to save even if you do something for Merlin. But now I want to talk about Derry. So she's only available right now for like the next four hours or at least when the video's gone up maybe like three and a half hours left honestly i do think it's probably better than something for derriori right now over someone like merlin the main reason why i've been having so much fun using her she is a one-man army like if you look at the sin team what we're doing we're bringing you know king to give crit damage the final attack we're bringing go for the accuracy now we're gonna be bringing merlin to get the crit chance derriori does that by herself, kinda. She gets the 30% extra attack, which bear in mind, Escanor with the king buff can only go up to 25%. Derry is going to 30. She's getting attack speed. She also works at Gopher, where you reduce the cooldowns. You're also getting the accuracy buff. Now with Merlin, you're getting that crit chance. So honestly, I do think it's, it actually might be better, but especially because right now, I do think we, everyone should have a good red DPS character. And if you haven't watched my last video, Tower Trials was made so much easier because of Derry. And like I said, her like one-man army usefulness a little bit. You can kind of plop her in any team and not really like focus on buff her up. She can just be a good DPS. Good AoEs. Honestly, probably one off, maybe even the best character in PvP, at least the way I've been seeing a little bit. Like, she's very, very good. And she's a character, if you plan to use her, you do have to take her towards like six stars. So, you know, doing a full rotation on Dero's banner actually does seem quite worth it. And if you have extra currency left over, maybe summon a little bit on towards Merlin, maybe get towards two to three star, one star even. And she'd probably still be usable a little bit. Like I said, the only thing that matters is giving that crit chance. Like, for the past, like, month and a half now, or two months even, I think the game's been out now, I've been unironically using Arthur just to give, just to give my barn 20% crit chance. I don't care about this skill. I don't even care about this ultimate. I normally put Arthur towards the, like, layer end of my ultimate rotation. I sometimes do find myself literally using Danifal Liz to get that small chance to get crit chance for three seconds for Escanor, which, once again, is nice, so... You know, the crit chance is good, and I've used it a lot. And in fact, remember, guys, she's going to go into tickets. So if you're like me, for example, I've been saving my tickets since, obviously, you know, Derry. Same for, obviously, Merlin. She gave me in a banner, and I have 46,000. There's a good chance I'm probably going to get her once. And that might be usable for some people. I will say right now for me, because I'm getting really far on stage. Uh, even someone as... Even Merlin, even if she's one or two star... The damage output that I'm like want from the character isn't there, so I might end up replacing her. So uh yeah, for me personally, I will be doing the full rotation because I want to showcase the character like six to five star, seven star even to show the full power and you lot can decide whether if you lot want to summon. Uh but generally I do think Derry definitely is worth it. You know, the Sin team is kind of complete now. And if you want to start focusing on commandments because you like Esterosa and now Zeldris is starting to become more of a reality, there's a good chance they're gonna buff up you know commandments a lot more as well. And at that point, Derry is gonna be a nice fit in on not only the Sin team, but also the Commandment team, which is always a benefit, right? So, uh, yeah, guys, I think that's going to wrap up the video. A lot of rambling, but a lot to talk about. I really do think Derry is worth summoning if you have the currency. Remember, only if you have the max currency, 160,000 crystals, because if you don't, I wouldn't bother. She's only really usable a little bit when you get towards high dupe level. Otherwise, you're not going to use her. Because remember, she is a DPS. If she's not DPSing, you're not going to bother. Uh, but Merlin, I'm interested a little bit. Not the most crazy kit, but the crit chance is nice. And I'm curious on her attack speed and whether this actual you know knockback is a crazy knockback and how they kind of pair other things with it later on whether we do get like a dn that can bind by like slamming the floor and like combining and binding like the whole field that'd be pretty sick right and like you lock Escanor, derry all in the back line the all throws in there for like two seconds and then you have your whole team just like whacking at them like, you know, they could make a better, but that's all speculation. We won't know. So, guys, thank you for watching. Let me know if you lot are summoning, whether that be for, obviously, Merlin or Derriere.
Uh, I did get comments saying, should I now summon for Monspeed? Probably not, because we now are getting the Monspeed Advent Battle, and you're now able to get four weeks of guaranteed Monspeed dupes. And I think if you go to the shop, but like the final like day before the update, you can buy another copy. So I think you're getting five copies of Monspeed for free. Oh, and I guess Helbrum's a thing, which I didn't talk about. But Helbrum is, no, no, we're not worth summoning. He's actually like awful. Um, oh, he looks cool though. I like, I like the artwork. I just like the green, I think. I haven't actually used him, so I haven't actually seen his model too much. But uh, yeah, guys, let's get wrap up the video. Thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, good luck in your summons. If you do plan summon, we'll be summoning tomorrow and showing uh, and all the other stuff in the update, which is looking quite exciting. So guys, thank you for watching. And uh, yeah. Peace.